but we're, we're inching up on him. He better keep doing his homework. A legend forced to remove his number one. A little disheartening, but you know, if that makes the other guys happy. We kind of joked about the PRI too. What if two bikes show up with number one? Oh yeah. And it did happen. Yeah. Oh boy. Should the number one remain? We've got a lot to talk about. Larry Spiderman McBride is a motorcycle icon, a 20-time champion, a world record holder. He's avoided disaster on the track, but the biggest disaster for him this past weekend was when he showed up at a brand new series and they said, you're not number one here. A heated rivalry is about to boil over in this final round, Larry McBride versus Mitch Brown. Before we get to that, let's take a step back and look at how this rivalry really heated up and caught fire at the Midwest Drag Racing Series. Good morning to you, 3.15 a.m. This is the part of Cycle Drag you don't always see. Back and ready to go to the airport though. Off to another race. As members of the class were looking for new opportunities, Todd Martin and Mitch Brown helped usher in a new series. This will be the first year Top Fuel Motorcycle competes at the Midwest Drag Racing Series. A very special moment here for Dan, wow. a.k.a. Vanguard. Let's see if that baby fits. I am official. Look at that. He's not even undoing the buttons. He's just going right over top of his head. I'm all headed. Got, look at that. Looking good. Looking good. Let's race it. He's ready. Guys, here's what happens if you try to take it without a gas mask. Not recommended. It's pretty cool. It sounds awesome. The nitro is not your friend, whether it's in your motorcycle or your lungs or your, lungs, or your eyes. Hopefully, it's not killing us. You okay? We, I got a, I got a splurge. Cycle Drag needs a budget for a gas mask. You guys can hook us up with two gas masks. One for me, one for Dan. Let us know. We need one badly. This isn't Man Cup, right? This is Midwest. Yeah, I guess. Midwest, and it's, it's juicy. It's interesting, guys. It's a talking point. Anything to get people talking about this class is a good thing. We got some brand new fans here. What's your name? Hello, oh, I love it. How old are you? Ten. Excellent. How about you? What's your name? Really nice to meet you. Give me Paul. You guys watch Cycle Drag? You will now. You like the Spider-Man? Excellent, guys. Fans of the future. We love it. Hey guys, take a look at this. This is the first time in more than two decades that anything other than the number one has been on the back of Larry Spider-Man McBride's bike. We got an interesting and somewhat controversial story for you to weigh in on. Both racers having legitimate gripes here. Let's explain the story to you. And here it is, guys. The new number one of Mitch Brown. This is a Willy Bar wrap that was purchased for him by the great Todd Martin after winning the Man Cup Championship. So here's the situation, guys. For the first time ever, Larry was told he had to take the number one off of his Willy Bar panels. He did not appreciate that because, as you can see, his bike is nicely wrapped and he is OCD. Now, why? Mitch Brown is the defending Man Cup champion, so he believes he has a legitimate claim to the number one. But let's explore this, guys. Was there a champion in 2021? The answer to that is very controversial because the Top Fuel Motorcycles only went to one Man Cup race. That was the finals. Is one race enough for a championship? Jay Regan of Man Cup never fully recognized a 2021 champion. Now, Mitch Brown is the 2020 Man Cup champion. We got to give him credit, but let's explore that. Why did Mitch win that championship? He went to one race, Dragway 42 2020, that no other Top Fuel competitors were going to. They announced beforehand they weren't going there. Larry wasn't going there. We had COVID issues and the death of one of his longtime sponsors. Mitch showed up, and due to the rules that Jay Regan had in place at the time, Mitch being the only bike, collected 100 points, and that made the lead unsurmountable. Larry then showed up the 
finals, beat Mitch in the final round. Larry won the most rounds that round. Mitch was crowned champion due to a rule that is now changed by Jay Regan. Jay Regan of the Man Cup now says there has to be more than three motorcycles that show up for it to even be a points paying event. So if it happened in this day and age, Larry would still be the champion. Mitch contends he's the champion. He deserves the number one. He's got the big rap. Larry says, I'm still the champion until somebody beats me. It's very interesting. Let us know what you think. Both are great racers. Both have interesting claims. I know as another juicy aside, Larry believes that that man cup rule may have been a loophole to get him. He feels like there's a lot of people that want to see him knocked down, that he's dominated for too long. And be that as it may, he's been on top for 20 years. You know, the New England Patriots, the New York Yankees, they have their haters. They want to see parody. And certainly Larry will tell you he wants to see people step up. But I want to know your opinion. Should Larry have had to take the number one off? Mitch claiming he is the number one justified top fuel motorcycle there it is and there's the man let's get the take from himself mitch you are the bona fide justified 2020 man cup champion last year we believe we didn't have one is that no one really knows i never saw points for top fuel for the 2021 season so um you know if we would have had points i would have won but i don't i don't claim that because there was no official points i don't know why man cup didn't release points for that even though we only raced one race got you um but you know 2020 um you know some, some people say it was the covid year we went to the track five times that year we went to two races we went to uh a race that nobody else went to and we went to the finals that everybody else did go to you know the thing the, the, the sad part about that whole deal there was that uh there's really no number one over here in, in this sanction right now because they hadn't even finished the first race so you know some people have a number one on their bike and you know i've had mine for many many years so it, it's uh it, it was a little disheartening but and we ended up on the top of the point sheet so you know i was on the fence about a little bit larry said you need to put the number one on your bike so that's what i did you know if that makes the other guys happy then then it makes me happy i'm all good with it but we played by the rules and we got the most points so will the next number one be the midwest drag racing yeah so our only you know the only thing that the top field guys have talked about this year is we're just going to make the three midwest races the championship the facts are mitch is the 2020 man cup champ so check it out a brand new number for larry spider-man mcbride 21 as charlie will tell us that means 21 championships total Total. He has 20. He won one with Jimmy Green. The real question is what does Dennis Bradley think about this? Maybe not the biggest deal to everybody. Hey, but you know what? Just intensifies the rivalry between two great racers, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a rivalry. He's the king, you know. He'll have that number one. And uh, I feel lucky that I got to be in a position to end up at the top of the points. You know, there's a lot of guys in this class that deserve that probably way more than me that didn't get one, so. Now, can't say I blame Mitch. Mitch is trying to use it as a marketing opportunity, but should he have made the legend, the all-time record holder, take off the number one? Good move, disrespectful. You guys let us know what you think. flying vanguard i was oh my gosh can you believe chris jericho once destroyed his drone when he worked for AEW? that's okay he's with cycle drag now let's get you to qualifying highlights larry mcbride dave van tyne side by side van tyne out of shape trying to fight off the center line he hits a block sprays it onto the spider-man take another look at over 200 miles an hour those foam blocks can feel like concrete Thank goodness a disaster was averted on that one. Two experienced riders showing their skills, and Larry McBride was unharmed, ready to compete. He got the number one qualifying position, and look at the way this is shaping up. Take a look at what happened to Mitch. Sorry, Mitch, the good news is a career best eighth mile time, 388. Nope. No. No, we ran 387 in Tulsa last okay. year. 
um, on the pass uh, after Dave when Sam was broke, and we ran 381 at Valdosta on the 594 pass. It looked very similar to what happened yep. in Valdosta. What yep. causes that? I don't know. Take another look. A great job of riding by Mitch to keep that motorcycle upright. I mean, I don't know. And you just motor right through it. You keep it pinned, huh? Well, what's that went, like? It went our... out. It, it blew out three and a half seconds, and I didn't want to lose the day. I already spent the money. As soon as it blew up, I knew it cost me money, so I just held it up on for another, you know, three tenths of a second, and shut it off. Truly amazing. And you said you lost a block and a head on that one. Yeah. Now, did you, very interesting too, you gained lane choice. Did you see what happened to the Spider-Man? I heard he came over and said that they left the throttle stop on and he ran like a day and a half. Or what and they call it on Street Outlaws, 10 school buses. Yeah. Due to a slower pass, the front tire picked up a lot of rubber. Larry wanted to make sure his crew took care of that so it didn't throw anything out of balance. And as for our final coming up, you couldn't have written a better script, Brown, Verse McBride. Look at this clip. We're on the starting line, but we're checking in on Mitch's pits. We got to go check in on Mitch. We got the cycle drag drone checking in on the Mitch pits way over. We're doing surveillance. <laughs> we'll come up and go to Spider Man. We just got to make sure Steve's in a good mood or he's, labeled, he's liable to punch it down. Yeah, he wasn't in a very good, his guys weren't being in a very good mood leaving the line. So great to the young team. Oh, well, there he is. Let's go. Go in there. Mm, I don't know what he thinks work. What do you think's happening in there? Maybe? It's like Chuck is servicing it. Yeah, maybe so. It's amazing. Technology. Wow. Remember when you gave him back that golden horseshoe? Hey, you know what? I think he might have needed it on that one. I think one. he used it on that one. Yes. I told him that. You know, I said, good thing you got that old burned up horseshoe because you, you probably used it to go to the final. Yes, he did. It can burn him up even on the eighth mile. Here's another look. Nitro is not your friend. And just like that, it's final time. The summer speed spectacular. We're down to our final round. Larry Spider-Man McBride in the left lane. Mitch Brown right. in the right lane. It is the Midwest Drag Racing Series. This is right where we left off two years ago, November 2020, Larry McBride's last official race. It was Spider-Man versus Mitch. Mitch blew up an engine last round. Saved the best for last. 
Wow, what a weekend. That's the way to bring in Father's Day. What happened there at the hit? Guys were a little bit worried. I saw you look up at Larry. It made a weird sound when you started it. I flooded it. Hey, that's okay. He, Bit said, he said, start this SOB. <laughs> well, Steve, for the first time in almost two years, you guys have won a race. Congratulations. Welcome back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stevie loves it. How about a big hug from Nettie? Big congratulations, that, Team Spider-Man and Brian. Wow. Let's take another look. Two of the most competitive men in the sport in an epic race. Guys, that was so awesome. I want to give a big shout out to Mitch Brown and Larry McBride. They endured sweltering heat. We got delayed here in St. Louis. As I said, it's 12.30 a.m. right now. Larry said that's the latest final he has ever run. Mitch just came off a stellar 388. McBride overcame a lot of adversity. And what did I tell you before? You don't want to give the McBride brothers too many opportunities because when their backs are against the wall, when they need to win the most, they seem to really, really perform. What a race it was. I know, we have to wait till the end of the year. But I got your beer. <laughs> That's good. Hey, you didn't get the number one back, but you got a cold beverage. What a great final, both of hey, you guys. Let me tell you, my number one is still number one because it's in his train. Oh, okay. there you go. <laughs> uh, hey, and let's talk about it. I gave you the horseshoe back. You definitely needed it today. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. If you don't, if you don't take the throttle stop off, it don't go very fast, right? Yeah. So uh, you still got one? What? Oh, sure. I, I got the new one. I know, and I got a whole out one. I'm bring, I'm whipping it out at Norwalk. Oh. I'm whipping it out at Norwalk. Damn. Good show, guys. Good show. Both of you guys. Congratulations. Good good weekend. Well, we got to say congratulations to Roland Stewart. I, I know in the winner's circle there moments ago, they said hold up at number one. And you made a comment to Mitch. Uh, I don't think you guys were too happy about having to take that number one off. Is that true? Yeah, we're, we're never happy to, to uh, take our number one off, especially for the reasons that were mentioned. So, yeah. So how sweet does it feel to be in the winter circle after all that? Great. Great. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Steve, I got a quick question for you. What changed with your tune-up? You really, really, you just nailed it there on that final run. We know conditions were so tough all weekend and they changed a lot and you just nailed it dead on. That was the only time we saw a bike go into the 370s. What'd you do on the final run? Well, we just changed a little bit on our application device. Okay. Which is actually the clutch. We made the right call. A little help from outside. There was your 70. We That's were, true. We were shooting for a 60. That was a clean pass. Do you think the track got a lot better later? Oh, most definitely. And the air really got in when it started to cool down. I knew we were in good shape. Well, congratulations. Like I said, first win in almost two years. I'm sure that feels good. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Thanks, guys. Let's take one more look. Hey, everybody wins with a great rivalry, right? If you haven't weighed in yet already, let us know your opinion down below in the comments. So there you go, guys. A rivalry ignited a good talking point. These guys clearly friends, both great competitors, but it is, it is interesting. And like I said, that's just gonna add a little more fuel onto what is shaping up as a great rivalry. Mitch and his team, they wanna beat Larry so bad. And they're getting closer. They're closing up that gap. My personal opinion and Again, people are going to say I'm biased, I'm friends with Larry, but I would say this if it was any legendary figure. Jim McClure, Dave Schultz, Elmer Trett. I mean, we got to put Larry in that category. He's on the Mount Rushmore. I would have not made the man take off the number one until it was a clear, decisive victory. Again, we got kind of a dubious championship. I don't want to take anything away from Mitch, but let's be honest. Won that championship in 2020 because he was the only bike that showed up at one race. 2021 there wasn't a championship being that that's dubious and there's gray area if i'm todd martin if i'm mitch brown i didn't i wouldn't have put the number one on the bike i do I, mean, I want to congratulate them and i will tell you the minute somebody steps up and beats that man for a championship and beats him 100 percent i'm all with it but thought that move might have been a little 
a little premature. But nonetheless, like I said, great rivalry. What say you? Let me know down below.